everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Maggie. Today I'm going to be kicking off my 2022 low buy for beauty and clothing. Overall, one of my goals of the year is to reduce the number of items I have in my home to like purge, declutter, and then not bring as much in. So that's something that um, kind of is a theme of the year. I feel like a lot of people are you know thinking that way at the beginning of the year. I'm really hoping I can keep that momentum through the whole year. Last year, I did a low buy series on my channel. I can link the playlist for you um, in the description box. And I really enjoyed it. I did a monthly check-in sharing what I might have purchased, how I was feeling, wish list items, all of the things. Um, and I want to continue to do that this year with a monthly update. So I have um, two different budgets and things that we'll be tracking in this video will be beauty items and clothing items. Um, one of the things that I was able to do at the end of the year was reflect on how last year's rules went, if I want to make any changes, things of that nature. And after that reflection, I have made a few different rules and changes to how I'm going to structure this year. So let's start with the clothing rules and the clothing, you know, goals and everything. Um, so my clothing budget for the year is going to be $600 and that's for the whole year. Um, I don't have, like if you guys watch my budgeting videos, I don't have a separate like category in my budget for clothing. It will just come out of my personal spending money um, that I give myself every month. So some of the rules that I have, so clothing to me means you know, any clothes, swimwear, um, undergarments, uh, shoes are included. I am not including jewelry this year, though. That's something that I do want to kind of reevaluate is my jewelry collection and maybe um, swap some things out. I feel like my style is starting to change and there's different types of pieces that I'd like to get that um, are a little bit more quality. So I'm not going to include jewelry in the clothing budget. Um, but everything else pretty much is. Anything else that I wear will be included. Now, with my clothing budget, I, like I said, I have $600 and I'm going to try to do it like with a quarterly mindset. So it'd be about $150 per quarter of the year. Um, I think that that'll help me because with each season, I tend to want to have some new pieces or I, you know, try my shorts and realize these ones don't fit anymore and I have a need for a replacement. So I think thinking about it quarterly will help me with the seasons as well. Um, also, I'd like to do a no buy month every quarter. So the months that I am not going to buy any clothing are February, May, August, and November. So it's that middle second month of every quarter. That's also kind of when we have a shift in a season. And I want to challenge myself to do these four months of no clothing because I just want a, a chance throughout the year periodically to st take a step back and think about things. Um, I certainly last year had a couple of months where I was just like going through my budget really fast. And it's not that I regret any of those purchases. They all served a purpose for me, but I definitely could have slowed down and thought about it more. So I'm hoping that these no buy months of February, May, August, and November will help me pause and think about kind of my habits a little bit more because it'd be like two months of buying, one month not, that kind of a thing. Um, so that is kind of the plan for clothing. I will be sharing with you any clothing purchases. And then the last rule I have, or system I should say, built into this is that every 10 items that I declutter, donate, give to a friend, hand me down, whatever, like getting out of my closet, I can earn $30 more to spend. So that's kind of like giving every item a $3, you know, value. Um, but I think that that'll also motivate me like if I want to get some more clothes for the summer and things aren't fitting me or just because they're old then I should get rid of them like I shouldn't just keep those ratty t-shirts you know I can I can get rid of them it's okay to replace them um, so I think having that little caveat in there that if I declutter and donate and whatever 10 items I can gain 30 more dollars to my budget I think that'll be motivating but also $30 isn't enough to buy 10 more items. So even if, let's say I got rid of 10 items in, you know, March or something, I can't, with the extra $30, I'm not going to be able to buy 10 more items to bring back into my, you know, closet. So it's purposely not even because I don't want to just declutter to replace. And, you know, if I'm going to bring things in, 
I want to make sure that it's at a smaller amount, like I'm getting rid of more than what I'm bringing in, if that makes sense. So currently on my clothing wish list, um, I have, and I'm trying to write them down, a like chunkier Chelsea boot. I have some different pairs of winter boots, but I don't know, I kind of want another pair. And they're not necessarily like snow boots, just like a chunky Chelsea boot that just slides on with everything. We'll see, I have plenty of boots. I'm probably just being picky. And the other thing I have on here are a pair of wedge boots. Um, I have a pair of Toms, like the gray, you know, wedge boot that everybody had. Um, and I just tried them on. I haven't worn them for like over a year, probably. Um, and I wanted to wear them for um, the week between Christmas and New Year because we we're out and about quite a bit. And they don't fit my feet anymore. So my feet must have grown. I didn't realize that or I don't know. But um, so they don't fit anymore. So I would like to repurchase a similar pair. They don't have to be Toms, you know, like I could get whatever brand but I like having a wedge booty because it's a little bit more stable um and it's just a little bit easier but I'm also looking at the Sorel brand which is more expensive but it has better gripping on the bottom for winter time and where I live it's very icy so I don't know I'm still kind of debating it but that's also on my wish list so just two pairs of shoes right now all right let's talk about beauty this is where I have all sorts of rules <laughs> so this year, I want to give myself $700 for the entire year, which is going to be $50 a month. And then November and December will get $100 a month so that I can participate in end of the year sales. My birthday is in December, so is Christmas. So if I want to purchase anything for myself um, as gifts, I can do so. Um, so yeah, it'll be $50 a month, except for November and December, that'll get $100. Um, I also want to do a credit system like I did last year. So for every makeup product I finished, I earned a credit. Um, I am going to roll over the extra credits from 2021. So I did um, end the year with five credits. So that's going to be my starting point for 2022 as I already have five in the bank. Um, and I'm going to earn one credit per product that I finish. And I'm going to earn half of a credit for every pan I hit. So I think that'll be exciting to kind of be able to earn things just by hitting pan too. I do have some pretty aggressive eyeshadow panning goals this year. So hopefully that'll help me out. Um, but what I am going to do is get rid of, last year I had a rule that if it was a one-to-one -one replacement that I did not need a credit. But because I'm going to add in these half, half credits for pan then I'm not going to do the replacement thing. So even if I am done with the mascara and I'm buying just one more mascara, it's going to cost me a credit. Um, so that rule is going to change from last year to this year. And this credit system is just for makeup. So it's not for skincare, it's not for body care, hair care, it's just for the makeup products because that's the area where I tend to like want to have more variety. I'm kind of at the point with skincare where I just have the products open. I might have like backups, but I'm not switching between like three different vitamin C serums throughout the week. I just have the one vitamin C serum that I'm using until it's done. Like that's just kind of where I'm at with my skincare now. Um, so that's why I want the makeup to be on the credit system to kind of, kind of limit where I'm at. Okay, so for specific categories of beauty purchases, I have some specific rules. So I only want to buy at most three eyeshadow palettes this year because I have um, not a huge eyeshadow collection, but I am realizing, oh my gosh, I have more um, dupes in my collection than I thought, and I don't want to keep buying palettes that are the same but different, if that makes sense. So I want to limit to only three eyeshadow palettes for the entire year. Um, I also only want to purchase up to five cheek products, so that would be bronzer, blush, or highlight or one face palette, because I also like face palettes, so I'm thinking I probably will wait to see what the holiday face palettes are like this year, or maybe pick up a different face palette, but I do actually really enjoy my Hourglass quad, um, so I could see myself picking up another face palette throughout the year in lieu of five additional like individual cheek products, but we'll just have to kind of see how the year goes. Um, I only want to pick up eight colored lip products, so not lip balms, but like a lip liner, lip gloss, lipstick, that kind of a thing. Um, I like the collection I have, 
but I just want to kind of keep it limited. Um, I do want to, I had to get rid of some of my bolder lipsticks because they were just getting too old. So I would like to get some other lipsticks in different shades that I don't currently own. I have a lot of nudes right now and a couple of threads, but I'd like maybe another berry or I don't really know exactly what, but that gives me enough wiggle room to still be able to purchase lip products um, and colored ones, but not go overboard. Okay, at maximum, I only want to buy three skincare kits. I love a good skincare kit with a bunch of little products and everything in it, um, but it's easy to go overboard with those two. So maximum of three like kits of multiple products with skincare in mind. No eyeliner purchases this year. I haven't used eyeliner, like a pencil eyeliner, for probably two years. I've been using eyeshadow. I just wet my brush, uh, you know, a liner brush with setting spray. I dig it into a shadow and I line my eyes and I really like it. So I don't really have a need for eyeliner. I don't need to be purchasing any. I also don't need to purchase any single powder eyeshadows. I know that that's kind of the trend right now, but I'm very happy with the palettes I have. A lot of my palettes are ColourPop, so they are magnetized so you can pop them in and out of the palette itself um, so I can still make like custom palettes and all of that fun stuff but I don't feel like I need to be purchasing any single eyeshadows because they tend to just sit in the background um, and I'm I don't know I'm just more of a palette person um, and then one more kind of skincare rule here is no purchases of face masks until I'm under three face masks I currently have a little bit of a stash of face masks I do really like them um, but I don't want to be hoarding them either because they do dry up. They don't last forever. So I'd like to just keep my collection around three. So I'm not allowed to buy any until I'm under three so that, you know, if I'm at two, then I could purchase one more to have a little rotation. Um, so those are the specific like call outs for the beauty products. Um, as far as like body and hair care, I really don't think I have an issue with those types of products, you know, just kind of being mindful of my purchases, but I didn't feel like I needed any specific like numbers to abide by. Um, some items that do not count towards my beauty budget and bank and everything are like more like true toiletry items. So deodorant, toothpaste, body wash, hand soap, and body SPF will not count towards my beauty budget. Those are more considered like household items. Um, and you know, just in my mind, so those aren't going to be counted, but, um, you know, my shaving oil that I really like from tree hut will be, and, um, lotions will be. So there's plenty of other body care products that will be included. Similar to my clothing, I am going to do some no buy periods throughout the year, and I'm doing it a little bit different than the clothing. I'm going to do six months of replacement only no buy. Um, and so the six months I've chosen are quarter one and quarter three. So that's January, February, March, July, August, September. And the reason why I chose those months, first of all, January, February, March, I'm like starting the new year off. I have what I need. I just got some really nice stuff for, um, you know, the end of the year with sales and all that. So I'm just, I should be good for the most part. I mean, there's a couple of things I'll need a replacement on, but it shouldn't be anything extreme. Um, and then July, August, September is the majority of the summer for me and I don't wear as much makeup in the summer. So, um, I'm not as concerned. I still have June that I can purchase. So when I need to get a foundation or a concealer, that's a little bit deeper to match, you know, my skin tone, I can do that, um, in June and get all of myself ready for the summer. I think I might want to get like a powder foundation this year. I think that would be better for my oily skin, but July, August, September is very light makeup wearing season for me. September a little bit heavier as the you know temperature cools off, but I still think that those will be okay months. So that's the goal. They'll be replacement only, meaning that if I don't have anything else I could use in its place, I can purchase it. But like, I don't know. If I run out of a moisturizer and I have another moisturizer, I'm not buying another moisturizer because I'll just use what I have type of thing. So those are the rules of the beauty low buy. Um, currently on my wish list, I have two palettes. I would love to get the Natasha Denona Glam Palette and the Natasha Denona Bronze Palette. The Glam Palette, I'm hoping, will replace my Sultry Palette, which is my Pan Met Palette for the year. I will link that video if you want to um, see my intro. But so that's probably going to be like an end of the year purchase for me um, to work through my Sultry for the most of the year because I really like that colorway and I've, I've seen side by side comparisons and they look very similar to me. And the bronze palette I think I'd really like in the summertime with like oranges and 
like bronzes and golds and all that. So we'll see how I'm feeling um, come like May, June if I want to purchase one. But those are the only items on my wish list currently. I know that I will need to get a concealer at some point and like my mascaras I buy every quarter. So those are normal purchases. But as far as like wish list items that I'm like kind of lusting after, those are the two right now. So that is it for my low buy this year. I know this video is kind of choppy. I've been interrupted a million times, but I hope that you could still figure out what I was trying to say. I would love to hear from you if you are doing something similar this year where I can find your progress if it's on Instagram or YouTube or somewhere else. Uh, let me know so I can check it out and cheer you on and see how you do too. But that is it for me. Thank you guys for watching. It means a lot to me. I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.